This Use a Play is brought to you by. With Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today. This is the Barbados Today morning update for Thursday, October the 30th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. A pleasant good morning to you. The Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry has responded to a suggestion by Home Affairs Minister Adriel Brathwaite for business leaders to hire ex-convicts. Brathwaite told the BCCI's luncheon at Hilton Hotel yesterday that the former offenders should not be discriminated against in the job market just because they have a criminal record. But Chamber President Tracy Shuffler said her organization could not support such a suggestion across the board. Shuffler pointed out that any decision to hire ex-cons had to be left to each business based on their policies and nature of their operations. The Home Affairs Minister also appealed to the private sector to support the programs at the Dodds Prison geared towards rehabilitation. I want to encourage you, um, where possible, um, to employ ex-offenders and certainly not to discriminate against them, um, not to turn them away um, because they've spent um, some time um, at DOS. I, I want to encourage you where possible you can use their services, um, that, that, you, that you do so, where you can use their products, um, that, you, that you do so. Um, give of your time, I, I'm aware some of you presently go into the prison and, and, and give of your time and, and, and contribute uh, financially to some programs. I have a lovely calendar on my desk, a 2015 calendar, um, where it shows the, the art of, of, of prisoners um, as on a monthly, every month has a, another um, painting um, that's been sponsored by, by one, of your, one of your members. Um, this is a kind of, of thing that I, I want to encourage you um, where possible, notwithstanding um, your fiscal challenges. Meanwhile, the Chamber of Industry and Commerce serves notice it is not on board with any moves by the government to raise taxes in the upcoming budget. While Chamber President Shuffler acknowledges proposals by the International Monetary Fund to reform the tax system, she warns that a tax hike will not be entertained. She told the monthly business luncheon of the Chamber yesterday that such a move would devastate the private sector and she made it clear that the BCCI will be sending a clear message to Finance Minister Chris Sinclair. We will fully support greater efficiency and collection of taxes, but will steadfastly oppose any further tax burden. We intend to make a formal submission to the Minister of Finance once we have fully enunciated our position related to the IMF's tax reform report. At the same time, we will submit our suggestions and proposals for the upcoming budget. A proposal by former Minister of Economic Affairs, Dr. David Estwick, for his government to wipe out its five billion US dollar national debt is still on the table for possible implementation. Dr. Estwick, who is Minister of Agriculture, has recommended that government accept an offer from the Abu Dhabi and United Arab Emirates governments to establish a sinking fund to retire the national loans when they become due. They have proposed a four billion US dollar fund at a fixed interest rate of two to four percent over a 30 year period. When he addressed a news conference on the economy on Monday, Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs Chris Sinclair revealed that while some progress has been made in respect of that proposal, the matter was still in gestation. The only other aspect is the issue of debt uh, refinancing, which again is linked to the same uh, proposal. Um, so, and, and, and we actively look at, at, at that. We, we don't pretend to do debt restructuring. That's one of the things that we want to keep very far away. We meet our commitments, 
we meet them in full and we meet them on time. And Barbados will continue to do that. We've never defaulted on a loan, local or international, and we have no intention to do so. The government is moving to abolish preliminary inquiries in magistrates' courts. Word of this from Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite as he was pressed by business leaders at yesterday's monthly luncheon of the Barbados Chamber of Commerce and Industry about delays in the introduction of new legislation. The abolition is expected to ease the backlog in cases and reduce the number of felons sitting on remand for inordinately long periods. A petition against the government's decision to construct an infectious disease isolation centre at Enmore is now in the hands of the Ministry of Health. The petition, which bears 3,140 signatures, was launched by the teachers and parents of the nearby Ursuline Convent School to press authorities to relocate the centre. And just yesterday, Health Minister John Boyce told reporters he had not received a petition but he stayed clear of saying whether he was prepared to move the unit. He only stressed that Barbados must be ready to handle any case of Ebola that may arise. It is regional and international news after this short break. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, November 20th to 23rd. Taste the culinary delights of top local and international chefs like Marcus Samuelson, Anne Burrell, Tyler Florence, Roger Mooking, Michael Hines, Dane Sadler, Daphne's Restaurant, and more. The Barbados Food and Wine and Rum Festival, 5th edition, November 20th to 23rd. Visit foodwinerum.com or contact Premier Event Services, Inc. at 435-0670. Get your tickets now at Wine World or Ticket. To the region now, seven months before general elections are due in Dominica, there are early predictions that the ruling Dominica Labour Party, or DLP, will secure a fourth straight term in office. The Caribbean Development Research Services, or CADRES, has published a poll showing a 2% swim away from the government, but it's not enough to sweep the opposition United Workers' Party into office. Poster and political scientist Peter Wickham says the swing is consistent with normal trends for governments seeking a fourth term. 43% of the respondents in the poll said they are backing the DLP, while 30% are supporting the UWP. On the international front in Maine, the United States, a nurse who recently treated Ebola patients in West Africa says she won't abide by quarantine measures. And Governor Paul Leapage is turning to the law courts to secure an order to force Casey Hickok to remain quarantined for 21 days. Hickok declares she won't be bullied by politicians and forced to stay at home when she is not a risk to the American public. The nurse has tested negative twice for Ebola. Last week, Hickok was held in an isolation tent in New Jersey for three days under that state's strict laws for health care workers who have recently treated Ebola patients in West Africa. That's our Barbados Today morning update. We will be back again this afternoon. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day. This news update is brought to you by... with Barbados's largest and fastest 4G network. Activate any Lime prepaid or postpaid mobile plan today.